Greg, appreciate the time as always. Thanks so much for doing this. And how you been? I've been doing good. Uh, yeah, it's been a good week for us. We just had our first grandkid last week. And, Congratulations. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So uh, spending time with the little fella. And uh, I'm going to enjoy opening day. I guess it's all starting up right about now. I know Baltimore started earlier, but uh, looking forward to putting on the Dodger game this afternoon and then maybe uh, the Rangers after that. Are you already training the grandchild to become a pitcher? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. He's just laying there. He's not doing much yet. But uh, uh, he's healthy. The, uh, the the mom is good. So it's all good right now. Well, that's the best news to hear. Let me start you off with the golf game. I know you're going to be a part of this uh, Celebrity Classic, the third annual. How's your golf game been? And what are you trying to look to put on display coming up in a few weeks? Well, I'm just looking to have fun. I mean, uh, Las Colinas is a great golf course. It's fun to play. And, uh, you know, it's fantasy golf for us. We get a chance to play with the golfers we watched in the clubhouse back in the 90s. So it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, go out, have a good time, and uh, enjoy watching these guys, you know, the best players in the world do their thing. Smoltz is, is a great golfer from everything that we've heard. Smoltz, Glavin, and, and yourself, how do we rank them one to three in terms of golfing abilities? Uh, well, obviously Smoltz, you know, he's the one giving shots. So he's obviously better than us. And, uh, me and Glav play about even, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. It's, uh, should be a lot of fun. It's going to be nice to reconnect with those guys and, uh, uh, talk golf and talk some baseball. Why so many people love baseball, obviously, is because we all grew up with it, you know, for sports, it was my first true love. You got to live out that dream and do so at the highest level ever with such uh, great success. I'm just wondering, though, with how many opening day starts that you had, what were those emotions like? And did it kind of just bring you back uh, to maybe some of uh, the younger days that of you just thinking about maybe one day living out this dream whenever you got the honor of getting the ball on opening day? Yeah, opening day is a lot like a postseason game. You know, there's that added anticipation, extra butterflies, all that stuff. You know, I know... Uh, being out of the game now for, you know, 10, 15 years, you see opening day and it kind of makes you wish you were still playing at times. But, uh, uh, you know, it's a very special day. And uh, when you get that opening day nod, it's a tremendous compliment, especially when, you know, you're pitching with Glavin Smoltzy guys right next to you. And, uh, uh, you know, you just, hope, you just hope to get that first win out of the way. We know a few years ago the Braves won a World Series championship. The last two years, Philadelphia's got the best of them uh, in the postseason, just what are kind of your thoughts on this Braves team heading into the season? Well, I mean, they're loaded and ready to go again. So uh, I'm looking forward to watching them compete. And uh, uh, hopefully they'll, you know, pull through again at the end of the season. You know, I think uh, uh, they're going to be one of the teams to beat when, you know, the time comes in, uh, you know, October. Do you give the edge to them or or, or Philadelphia right now? Because that's a, it's a fun one-two yeah. race there. It's kind of hard to guess right now. I think you got to wait and see about a month before to see like you know all the extra moves that are made and which players are healthy or which which guys are having good years and uh you know right now I think all the teams are just concerned with getting off to a good April, having a good April and uh you know trying to build some momentum for the summer. You know, obviously with the resume that you have and when you had to go into a new clubhouse with a team with expectations. Like you look at a, a Corbin Burns who had so much success in Milwaukee and now is going to an Orioles team where the expectation is to win the world series. But what is that life like kind of acclimating yourself to a new life and, and a new clubhouse? Well, hopefully his teammates are taking care of that for him. You know, if, uh, uh, if, if your teammates will welcome you and accept you, it, it makes life a lot easier. So I think, you know, for, first you have to earn the respect of your teammates and, uh, you know, it, it does take a little time to settle in. You know, I think uh, most free agents, when they change teams, it takes them a month or two before they're settled in. And, uh, you know, ho hopefully the transition will go well for them. Talking to the Hall of Famer, Greg Maddox, right now. The biggest story as the season does start is what happened last week and what we found out about Shohei Otani uh, following it. Just what was kind of your whole reaction with his translator, Ipe, and then uh, all the speculation about what Shohei involvement was or what is not. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's tough. I'm still kind of waiting for some more info to come out right now. You know, I think uh, uh, I think we only know bits and pieces of it. You know, I think it's uh, I'm going to wait till I hear more of the story before, you know, I actually have an opinion on it. Uh, I don't know a lot what's going on right now. I, I just you know, you hear news clips here and there about it, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens down the road.
Yeah, you have this issue in Major League Baseball. We've seen another issue uh, pop up in the NBA recently. I know that uh, you grew up in in Las Vegas. Just uh, what is kind of your thoughts on navigating this gambling landscape where you know as a baseball player, you can't gamble on on baseball, but I'm sure there's a lot of people behind the scenes getting your ears and and telling these former players to do things. Uh, I know when I was playing, you just got asked certain questions. Hey, which way is the wind blowing at Wrigley and stuff like that? But, uh, you know, I think uh, it, it, it was made very clear as a young player that you don't bet on the game. You know, they uh, read you the rule in spring training. They come and read it to you again at the all-star break. And, and uh, you know, I've probably heard it 40 times. And, you know, there's there's a lot of things you can do in baseball, you know, and you'll get a second chance. But the one thing you don't get a second chance is, is gambling on the game. You know, I'm just curious when we're talking about the Dodgers right now with Greg Max, we get to them on the field. Uh, they are uh, on a baseball diamond with Freeman and Betts. And now you got Otani. They're just an all-star team. You've been on a few of these all-star teams that are on one team when you were with the Atlanta Braves. Just how about that pressure knowing that everyone's going to judge your season as either a success or failure based on if you're uh, holding up that commissioner's trophy at the end of the season? Well, it's a it's a good problem to have. I mean, you, you'd much rather be on that team than all the other teams. You know, I think uh, uh, I think as a player, you welcome the expectations. I think uh, uh, I know in Atlanta all the years we were there that uh, the pretty much everybody on the team expected to win the World Series. You know, that was something that we we all tried to win together. And uh, it's a very good problem to have. You know, the expectations are just what they are. You know, I think you leave them outside the clubhouse and you do what you can to become the best player you can be. Is there anything you could do as a player, you know, outside of just winning to kind of alleviate that mental grind? Because no one's really going to praise the Dodgers this year for anything they do in the regular season because it's all about the buildup to get into October and then seeing them try to really start their season when that postseason uh, journey does commence. Well, I'm sure the players know better. I think Doc will have them under control. And, I, you know, it's all about enjoying the season, enjoying the game, playing hard, trying to get better, trying to improve. Uh, and hopefully you win enough along the way. And, uh, you know, if the team's good enough, they're going to do that. And, you know, you really don't worry a whole lot about October, especially today. You know, I think you're just – I mean, obviously it sounds stupid, but you really do take it one pitch at a time, one day at a time, and and hopefully you put yourself in position to have a good run in the postseason. Who are some of the pitchers just wondering nowadays that you really take a liking to and that you really enjoy watching them pitch on the mound? Well, you know, my brother's a pitching coach in Texas, so I kind of follow the Rangers probably more than any other team. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to watching Evaldi pitch tonight. You know, I think uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to go to spring training with them last year and and, and got to know some of those guys a little bit. And, uh, you know, kind of pull for, you know, my brother and his staff probably more so than anybody. So, uh uh, I'll be keeping a close eye. I need to catch up. I'm kind of behind the eight ball a little bit with the grandkid and everything. I haven't followed a lot of baseball in the last month. And uh, I'm going to do some catching up here in April. Seeing that team win a World Series last year, just what kind of emotion did it elicit from you? Just wondering. Oh, it was awesome. I mean, I felt like I won the World Series again. You know, I think uh, uh, having been a very, a very tiny part of it in spring training and and watching all the years my brother spent in the game and, you know, for him to finally get that ring was pretty special. And Bochy is just insane as a manager. Everywhere this guy goes, he wins. It's it's crazy. Yeah, he's legit. I mean, he's, he's got some kind of recipe that all the other managers wish they had. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just something about his demeanor, his knowledge of the game, and how he communicates well with his players. And they always seem to win. You know, there always seems to be the the six, seven, or eight hitters that seem to be outplaying the other team, six, seven, and eight hitters. You know, it's just all the little things add up, and he's very good at it. Last thing I'll ask you, there's a lot of excitement with the Yankees. Uh, I know Garrett Cole's hurt to start out the season, but you got Judge and Juan Soto in the same lineup. Just how would you kind of approach that that one-two punch that the Yankees have uh, with two great hitters, yeah. Judge and Soto. I mean, that's a tough one. You know, you got to pick your matchups and uh, hopefully you get the other seven guys out. That's for sure. But, uh, uh, you know, the game will dictate how you go about that at times. You know, the situations of the innings guys on or whatnot, you know, how however it's going to play out. But that's definitely a one-two punch that's going to do a lot of damage this year. And before we let you run, just tell me what we got cooking here with the uh, third annual Invited Celebrity Classic. For more information, invitedcelebrityclassic.com. 
Yeah, again, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's fantasy golf for us. Las Colinas is a great golf course. And, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing all the guys that I looked up to on the golf course back in the 90s. Uh, last thing, actually, just one more for, for Greg Maddox. How do you think you would have adapted to the pitch clock? And just what were your thoughts of, of seeing the pitch clock play on out last season? I would have loved it. I think it's more of the hitter's clock than the pitcher's clock, you know, because it forces them to get in the box and hit. You know, there's you don't see the stepping out like you had back in our day and, uh, you know, the extra 30 seconds to the walk up song and all that stuff. I think it, I think it would have been great. I would have loved it. And it provides less thinking. Like, is that actually good for a pitcher to think less? Uh, no, you don't have to think less. I think if, if you understand the count and the situation and the hitter and you do your homework properly, your pitch selection comes pretty quick.